Hi, thank you. I uh, came in late. Um, fortunately, um, a lot of great things were said, and it gave me time to stop sweating because I was running late. I had a bike here really fast. Uh, I'm Michael Demro, I'm a state representative. I, I represent Cus District 45, which is in Northeast Portland, uh, out to Park Rose. Uh, and uh, I've been in the middle of all this conversation about uh, changes to higher ed. I co-chair the higher ed committee in the House of Representatives, I sit on the education committee, I'm also on the education ways and means subcommittee. Uh, but uh, perhaps more relevantly, I am myself a college faculty member. I've taught at Portland Community College for 30 years. And so uh, this question of uh, how do we define quality is, you know, first of all, let me say as, a, as an instructor, it's something that I ask myself every day. Am I doing a quality job? You know, I mean, it's something that we struggle with all the time. And I know that it's, it's really at the heart of the education experience. And, it, and it, it's this question of what is quality? Uh, and that's why I, I really appreciate the setting up of this uh, session to really address that. Um, as we were going through the reform, uh, the reform work last session, uh, it became clear that one of the things that we we're going to look at, as Ben alluded to, was uh, changing our, our funding structure so that we're not just funding for uh, people's you know, seats in the chairs. We're not just bringing them people in, but we are also, uh, we want to fund in order to guarantee that they have a, a quality experience and a successful experience. Now, you know, that means looking at metrics for success. And there, there are certain quantitative metrics that I think we can come up with pretty easily. Uh, and we need to, uh, you know, we need to look at uh, how, uh, how people are navigating the system, how quickly they're able to complete uh, their, their degree goals, um, who is coming into the system, are different institutions working to overcome the access gap, you know, you're at the achievement gap, uh, but, you know, in higher ed we have an access gap, to make sure that students of all backgrounds and ethnicities and uh, you know family backgrounds are able to to access higher education, you know we can do those numbers. But what's much harder is how do we how do we gauge success and make sure that the degrees people are getting, the certificates that they're getting, are not just pieces of paper. You know uh, you know we can certainly uh, uh, dilute our courses. Um, lower the quality of our courses to get people through more quickly and thus more easily achieve the 4040 goal. But what have we achieved if we've done that? Um, and so, you know, another thing that we did was pass a bill uh, called the, the Student and Institutional Success Act, House Bill 3418, uh, whose charge is specifically to look at um, what constitutes success in higher education in our colleges and our universities, not just in a quantitative manner, but in a qualitative manner. Because I know as a faculty member that um, much, if not most, of the learning that students, uh, that students achieve happens not in the classroom. Actually, it happens outside the classroom. Uh, it happens uh, in uh, conversations that they have with faculty uh, in their offices or, you know, with other students working together on a group project or, um, or uh, instances in which they are put into to use uh, what they are learning in the class, you know, through uh, student organizations, through internships, through uh, perhaps foreign exchange uh, experiences, intercultural uh, exchanges, uh, student employment, uh, those kinds of things are, just looking at my own experience as a student, that's where I learned a lot, actually. Uh, and that's something that it becomes very hard to test, you know, to really register that on a test. Um, how exactly do you do you uh, document the value of PSU senior capstone projects? Where I would argue, you know, from what I've seen, 
students are able to take everything that they've learned in their courses and put it all together and get them ready to use it in you know, the next steps. Speaking of the next steps, you know, I think that quality, um, you know, when we think about uh, what it is that, that uh, guarantees quality or makes us feel that we're doing a quality job, as faculty, we want to feel that our students are going to be successful, that, that, that we leave them ready for the next level. You know, whether the next level is the next course in sequence, or it's, um, you know, if they're at a community college, that they're transferring, they're going to be successful uh, there. If they're going to graduate school, uh, or if they're going into a health profession, they're going to do well on their board exams. Uh, you know, those kinds of things, um, uh, we, we uh, and, and, you know, that they're going to be successful in their jobs as they go on. Those are all really important indicators uh, of, of success, but they're harder to measure, I will say. You know, the other challenge that we have, as the question was posed, was thinking particularly about the non-traditional students who are, if we're going to get to 40, 40, 20, it's going to mean bringing even more uh, non-traditional students into the system. Uh, and the role of a, a school like PSU is really going to be critical. But those non-traditional students, it, it's hard for them to have those experiences outside the classroom, <coughs> frankly. You know, just, I mean, my experience as a community college teacher, I know that students, the non-traditional students, those who are also juggling family responsibilities, work responsibilities, etc. It's hard for them to do those, uh, you know, to join the student, student government or student organizations or do the on-campus, spend a lot of time uh, uh, attending the lectures, etc. So that becomes a real question. Not only how do we measure that kind of quality, but how do we induce students to carve out time in their extraordinarily busy lives to be able to do this kind of work. And at the same time, and, uh, and I'll, I'll conclude with this, but I know we'll come back to, to more detail. Um, I was really struck when Ben was talking uh, uh, about his, his experience as an undergrad. What we want students, what we want most of all to leave students with is a passion for learning. Right? If we don't do that, we really haven't accomplished what we need to because learning, we all know, is a lifelong kind of thing. And we definitely don't want to just be training students for a particular occupation or a particular job, which isn't to say that we don't want to do that, but we don't just want to do that. We want that first job to be uh, a step in a path you know, to, uh, to a career. And that's going to involve subsequent learning. It's going, to, it's going to involve us filling students with the confidence that they can go back to school, in fact, they want to go back to school and do the learning uh, that, it, you know, that it will take to move up to the next level. How do we measure that? 